I wanted to close out this casting session by showing you some close-ups of what was uh, uh, the effects of that hot molten lead on these last few uh, bullet molds. This one here is one of the oblong bullet molds that I was using as a guinea pig to torture test on my hot plate. It actually held up pretty darn good. I mean, I'm, if I hold it to just the right light, uh, unfortunately, these particular uh, this particular mold it started developing those uh, horizontal erosion striation surface finishes after only like four four bullets. In fact, I can hold up one of the bullets. See that it transfers over onto the surface of the bullet. That's that's the same kind of a uh, surface finishes that's on the cavities on the I can't quite hold it because the white color of the cavities washes it out well you might be able to see that that's the uh, the damage that the heat does to these to these particular molds anyways uh, oddly enough the the second one of those out of brown bullet molds cast the same number of bullets out of it and damned if the surfaces aren't just about perfect I mean there there is no erosion nothing like that on that particular one or this half either however this one was uh the flashing on the nose of the hollow point is because the uh the hollow point pin was so loose that some lead was getting down in there but this one too it started giving me good bullets but they were out of round so uh that's why this was just a guinea pig mold that I torture tested this one here I don't know what happened to this one. This one actually came out nice and shiny, but the bases of these and the noses of these came out bad, so uh, that's why they were culled from the from the good good bullets. Okay, moving this on. This is a good there. nine millimeter that I, I call it good because it came out to the correct uh, dimensions. Uh, looking at it, I got twelve good usable shootable bullets out of it, and I got these that turned out uh, not to be usable mainly because the uh, Let's see what's wrong with these. I actually, I think this one came out of one of the other molds, the oblong molds, because it looks in good shape. But it, the reason I called it was because it was uh, out of round. Anyways, I wanted to show you these. They're really not that bad, but they're not good either. The base of this one's messed up on the edge here. Um, the base of this one is also messed up. That's why it was called. Uh, and this held up for like 11 or 12 rounds. And then I started seeing faint, faint hints of uh, that horizontal striation and uh, I'm, I'm really at a loss right now to figure out what's causing it. Notice the gray horizontal stripe near the top of the, the cavity. That was actually a hairline clack, uh, crack that got filled in with molten lead and uh, that's why it's gray like that. That's, that's a pretty big crack uh, from side to side. Okay above that this is the uh, flat sided 45 hollow point. I got, what's the, 3, 6, 9, 11. I think I, I think I got 12. I mixed one of them up. I got 12 good ones out of this batch before the mold started showing. Uh, yeah, maybe you can see that. Before the mold started showing that horizontal cracking or striations. Um, yeah, there you go. See that hairline crack? About an eighth inch down and then another three eighths of an inch down from that. Okay, that started developing about 11 or 12 casts in. Um, these were called because of the bad bottoms. I know the difference because when I took them out of the water for cooling, I marked them just so I wouldn't get them mixed up. This is the flat-sided mold. That's why it's FX. Uh, actually, this goes on the other one. This is a hollow point, or the handled, the new handled mode, mold. Um, it wasn't too bad, but the base was rounded on it. I'll show you this one when I get to the next one. But you can see the other ones there. The bases are messed up. The mouths all turned out good. The hollow points were nice. Um, I did want to show you something on these. Some real close-up. These are usable. When I put my calipers on these, they come out exactly what I want them to be. But the, even when they're before they're sized. But the, uh, the thing is, the calipers float over the high spots. And uh, a lot of those low spots are actually... Uh, layer lines for each layer of the resin print and so uh i mentioned in one of my comments that if i make these a thousand like a couple thousandths larger in diameter i'll be able to completely shave these nice and clean but uh these here are still usable in my my opinion and uh when i powder coat them 
I'm going to resize them again anyway, so they're like perfectly smooth by then. Uh, but anyways, I wanted to show you a close-up of that, just so you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, man, see, notice the shiny part right here. I'd love for all of it to be like that. But uh, it's really not necessary for it to all be like that in order to shoot. I got some bullets out of my metal molds that dis dis you know display some of the same surface textures as these. And they shoot per perfectly fine. But all of these are shootable, cast are reloadable, powder coated. Uh, what's the word? Powder coatable, if that's a word. And uh, I'm going to be shooting those uh, hopefully later on or early next month. So if you want to see that, let me know and, and I'll show you what they look like after I powder coated them. Notice the base of this one. It seems to stick down a little farther. It's, that's because when I put run it through the, the sizing die, it pushes the lead downward and lets it hang off the edge. And I just got to trim that off. Okay. Here is the... Uh, the mold, the latest mold with the the handles on it. This one actually started to go bad on me, if you call it bad. Uh, pretty close to like the 14th or 15th cast. Um, also, I wanted to point out something else. I had rounded off the top edges of all of these cavities in order to keep them from chipping up. And it did just that. What you're seeing here is just residual lead that got ground into the top but it didn't crack none of these cracked on top along the top edge so they were all good i i got good bullets out of it oh here's a good one i can show you an example see those lines that go from side to side okay that's that most of that is actually the layer lines in the print um i've actually uh found a calculation that will help me to eliminate most of those layer lines in the print process um I don't want to put it in this video because uh, it'll make it longer than it needs to be. But anyways, these are good powder coatable, shootable bullets here. But uh, I, I also saved these and I, I put some some uh, sizing sizing grease lube on it just so it would contrast the low high the low and the high spots. Okay, see the low spots are just like maybe a thousandth below the surface of the shiny part. So uh, if, if or when I add that additional one or two thousandths to the diameter of this, of this bullet, all of that will be shaved clean like this, you know. And uh, oddly enough, the upper parts of these bullets, they didn't show as much of that uh, layer line transfer of, of the surface finish to the tops as they did at the bottoms so uh yeah i wanted to show you that and i'll be back later i wanted to close out this, this uh, particular series of casting sessions and 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 uh show you how the bolts came out after i powder coated them they actually came out pretty decent i mean uh i i got a double layer of powder coat on this and the reason i did that is uh i think i showed you in the previous part of this video unless i edited that out i doubt that i did but uh, when I initially uh, sized them in my sizing die, I could see plainly that it had high spots and low spots on the surfaces. And when I put my calipers to those original bullets, uh, the calipers were actually uh, measuring the top most edges of the high and low spots. And that, that was good. It came out good the way it was supposed to. But anyways, uh, if I when I powder coat my bullets, I use two, two layers of powder coat. How I'll do it is I... Uh, well, the, the recipe for doing that, it says to heat them in a, in an oven at 400 degrees from, from 10 to 20 minutes, or 15 to 20 minutes. I only do it like 10 minutes, and I'll take them back out and repowder coat them. That gives them an extra thick coat. And uh, by doing that, it gave me a finish on these. It was like, I mean, super smooth, super pristine. And then I resized them again. And I wanted to show you, I'll give you an example of, the dimensions I'm getting after they've been resized, that that registers at 0.453. Actually, in my sizing die on the side, it says 0. 0.452. For whatever reason, it's it's sizing them to 0. 0.453 in diameter. Um, the nine millimeter bullets, same thing with them. I, they got a double layer of uh, powder coating on them. 
and uh, they come out at 3.355. The die on it says, uh, the, the inscription on the die for that says 0.356. Actually, if I don't push down hard on them, it is 0.356, which is exactly what they're supposed to be. Anyways, uh, that's that's the finish I get on them by double coating them with powder coat. I mean, they look like, hell, they look as smooth as regular bolts that you would buy at the store. Um, down here, these are dummy rounds that I loaded up. I just wanted you to see what they look like when they'd be loaded. Um, the mouth is flared on the top deliberately just so I could push that in there with my fingertips. Anyways, that's what they'll look like when they're, uh, after they've been uh, reloaded. Just to give you a preview of that. I won't be any, uh, be doing any shooting or reloading with them until I get a few more casts. No sense in going all the way to the range with just a handful of bullets. Anyways, that's how they turned out. Also, uh, I, I got my powder scale here, or my, my scale here, and I wanted to show you what, what kind of measurements or, or weights I was getting out of these in grain weights. Uh, they're pretty consistent. I mean, I was getting 226 almost across the board. That, that's actually 228. Ha! Wouldn't you know it? 232. You know what's funny? I pre-measured or pre-weighed these before I actually went on. And uh, I separated them. All these up here were 228, 226. Now I get that 231. I did get this many here that came in in a 230 weight range, which is fine with me because the standard weight or generally the, the common weight for 45 caliber is 230 grains. This is an oddball. I, it came out to, well shit, now it's measuring 228. When I put it on there before it was 222 uh, grains. Um, the 9 millimeters surprised me. They came out pretty heavy, man, for 9 millimeters. Um, 236 grain weight and uh, most of them that's 238 these here are the heavies they came out to well 230 they were registering a 240 before but anyways I just wanted to show you the weights it, they're fairly consistent I mean uh, if I made the mouths of the hollow points a little bit bigger it would lighten the weight on all these but I think this is a this is a perfect size of hollow point uh, dimensions at least for my for my needs these are just plinking rounds right here uh, so yeah man let me know what you think about this uh, I'm happy shit they came out just way just the way I dreamed they would although it took me a long time to get them to this point but still I did get to this point and uh, you know if I wasn't so self-conscious about putting my face on on camera hell you'd see a guy wearing a shit-eating grin like you wouldn't believe because to me this has been a success um, I still have to do some work on my molds, still some more tweaks to be done. Uh, I mentioned in my previous comment that uh, I'll be slightly increasing the diameter of the cavities by a couple of thousandths of an inch. That should help a lot uh, in getting smooth surfaces. Also, I'll be uh, orienting my models on the build plate in a specific angle so as to eliminate as many as the lay, uh, you know, as much of the layer line texture as possible as they come out of the printer hopefully that will add to the pro, uh, to to the life of the the bullet mold so uh, yeah man that's it I'm getting closer and closer to getting perfect bullets right out of the mold but uh, I'm not quite there yet um, thanks a lot for sticking around I'll be casting another couple of batches until I run out of resin but I think I'm pretty damn close to, to my final goal which is to uh, 3d print some cast bullet molds that will last for longer than just, you know, 15 bullets or so. Uh, that's not bad to me either because with a bottle of resin, I can cast a crap load of bullet molds. But uh, I've already got the metal ones, so I just wanted to make sure, I wanted to prove to myself that this could be done. And I think I've done that. Uh, I hope that you uh, have learned a few things from this. I know I have. And on to the next stage of this project.